Meet Uncle Sam. He has a lot of bills to pay, almost four trillion dollars worth every year. Uncle Sam's income is a little over two trillion dollars per year. To make up the difference, the deficit, he does what most Americans do: he borrows money. When Uncle Sam takes out a loan, he calls it a bond. Bonds can be held by banks, investors, or even foreign governments. Uncle Sam has to promise to pay interest on these bonds, just as you do on any loan you take out. Ever consider paying your mortgage with your credit card? That's exactly what Uncle Sam does. He takes out new loans, new bonds, so that he can make payments on the old ones. All those loans and all that interest adds up. Right now, Uncle Sam owes about 14 trillion dollars. To put that in perspective, 14 trillion is about the same as the national GDP, the total value of all the goods and services produced by the entire American economy in a year. It's such a huge amount of money that Uncle Sam is starting to run out of people to borrow from, and he's having trouble just paying the interest on his loans. Historically, Uncle Sam's income has come from taxes, but every increase in taxes has been followed by an increase in spending. And anyway, in the last few years, the gap between taxes and spending has gotten so huge it would be pretty difficult to make up the difference. So raising taxes is not a very appealing option. By the way, the majority of tax revenue comes from Social Security and individual income tax. The little yellow bits on this graph show the amount that corporate income tax contributes. Remember that the next time Uncle Sam's friends in the business community tell you that you should pay more taxes, but that they shouldn't. Anyway, Uncle Sam has one more way to make money. Just make it. He can place a phone call to the Federal Reserve, which is our central bank, and like magic, money is created and deposited in banks all around America. The problem is that the more of something there is, the less it's worth. Same goes for the U.S. dollar. The more dollars there are, the less each one will buy. That's why commodities like gasoline, food, and gold become more expensive when Uncle Sam does his money-making magic. The commodities aren't really worth more; your money is just worth less. That's called inflation. Remember the foreign governments that lent money to Uncle Sam? When they lent money to the American government, something interesting happened. It made the U.S. look richer and their countries look poorer. When another country looks poor and America looks rich, one dollar of our money buys a lot of their money, so they can pay their workers only a few pennies a day. With such low labor costs, they can sell their products in America for lower prices than any American manufacturer can. The easiest way for American companies to compete becomes to move their factories overseas and pay their foreign workers a few pennies a day too. This causes a recession. Americans lose their jobs, stop paying taxes, and start collecting federal benefits like Medicaid and unemployment. This means that Uncle Sam has even less income and even more expenses. At the same time, the people who still have jobs are desperate to keep them, so they tend to do more work, but not to get paid anymore. When your dollars are worth less and you're not earning more of them, that's called stagflation. And this is why Uncle Sam is in a catch-22. He can't raise taxes or cut spending without making the recession worse, and he can't have the Federal Reserve create more money without making inflation worse. For now, he can keep borrowing money, but since he can't even pay the interest on the loans he already has, it just makes the eventual bankruptcy even worse. Whether in two months or two years, the day will inevitably come when Uncle Sam can no longer pay his bills. When that happens, the banks, investors, and foreign governments who are counting on that money won't be able to pay their bills either. If investors can't pay their bills, corporations won't be able to pay their employees. If banks can't pay their bills, you won't be able to take out a loan, use a credit card, or even withdraw your savings. If foreign governments can't pay their bills, their own banks and corporations will have the same problems. That's called a global economic collapse. And it's really scary. It's never happened before, so nobody really knows how bad it will be, how long it will last, or even how we'll eventually get out of it. The only thing we can do 
is to educate ourselves, try to figure out what's actually going on, and to prepare for what may be very extraordinary circumstances.